Pietro Scalia. Thank you very much. So I want to start with just a very, it's going to be a broad question. I think we'll have a lot of branches off. Um, but for you, in your opinion, what makes an actor easy to edit? Well, what I, you know, being in, in the cutting room, I don't have the interaction with the actors on the set. So when I uh, start to see, you know, the, uh, when I get the material, I'm inspired by what I see, by the footage itself, you know, the way it's shot, the way it's lit, and things start uh, coming to life. I have my own uh, opinion about, uh, you know, story and character, having, you know, read the script and, and, and imagined the, these people. But when it becomes real, it's something completely different. So I always look forward to that moment when I get the dailies and I get to see what the, the actor brings and, or the interpretation of, uh, of that character. Um, and I look at the material, uh, we usually look at with, with the director, with Ridley, we, we sit down. Nowadays, we used, to be, we used to project it with the directors and with crew, and nowadays people don't do that anymore, but it's a good it's a, it's a good uh, practice to have to to uh, to respond to the material. Nowadays, people look at on you know on iPad and so forth. Anyway, we go through this ratio, but the initial response is very very important. And I look at it like a a viewer, like an audience, sure. and I respond to the things that are real and truthful, uh, in, in a sense. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, it's it's a it's a uh, general term about uh, uh, truthful, but I, I uh, things that feel real to me. Or things that I react to. On that the, you're looking at making. Uh, yeah, I, I don't look at it. Oh, is that correct? Is that wrong? And it's not right or wrong. It's it's about what is it? I I know how to respond to something that makes me feel in a certain way. I know the response, and I and I mark that uh, mentally. That stood out. Uh, sometimes I make a note. When we look at the material, it's not the director says, "Oh, I like this or like that." Take people think it's that kind of selection, and then you just like. You're an executor of somebody's direction. The most important thing for me when I see the material is how I respond to it emotionally. So I look for, for that, those trigger points. And uh, people have asked this question before, how do you start on, on the scene, how do you work? And the most important thing for any movie or any storytelling is character. That's, that's the way you enter the story. You might have you know, a, a script, a blueprint of a story and, and, and characters. But it's what's real, what has been shot, what the actor brings, what the director has chosen. But also that real moment that is captured on, on film or on, on, on digital that builds character. Mm -hmm. So for me, the first point is like, is getting the clues and the things that I need that are pertinent to the scene, but also in a larger context, what is truthful to the character. For myself. Okay, so if I'm hearing right too, it's like the script gives you the shape of okay, this is the story that must be followed, but where there are those sudden bursts of, bursts of inspiration or feeling or something, it's where can we kind of put these within to help enhance Well, the, the thing story? is, you know, yeah, I mean, to some extent, I mean, the story uh, or the script is really a blueprint, and, and, and there's a lot of people that work towards, uh, you know, making. Um, the, the the film works so it's it's a director the production designer the DP they're all storytellers the, the actors they will bring something to to the film story but it's not a given it's not a given what's on the script uh, film and specifically the the creative process is something that is very very organic it depends on what happens that day on the scene how it's directed how it's lit and what the what the actor brings in there so. Yes, there is a general sense of this. This is the the story. This is the character starts here, goes through different stages, right. transforms himself. He learns something and comes out the other. I mean, that's that's basic. But what is real is what uh, what the people on the set, you know, um, do. And so I'm not on the set. I get this material kind of uh, un unfiltered, and I can see things that I respond to. So the choices that I make is I choose performance, I choose the takes, based on my own instinct, gut instinct, of where I want this character built. And I, I think I have the luxury and the privilege to be very, very intimate 
I mean, to, uh, uh, to, to these, these people in the sense that I see all the takes. I see, I see the variations that the actor brings or what, what they try, you know, and a lot of times they, they have a very, you know, specific idea of what the character is. And a lot of times, uh, I mean, I'll tell you one funny story, uh, just as, as an example. Uh, I was working on Goodwill Hunting, Robin Williams, you know, and, and the guys. And the way Gus worked was that he let the actors do a lot of improvisation. They knew the script, they had worked on it, they were very familiar with the line. So he, he, let, he gave them a lot of freedom to, to improvise. Right. Um, Robin Williams is also somebody that l uses improvisation right. and also would throw like curveballs at, at the actors in order to keep it fresh, you know, like from, from, from behind the scene. Uh, and Gus is very easygoing. He likes uh, natural uh, performance work. But I noticed that he does very few takes, two, three takes, you know, in, in one particular setup. But with Robin Williams, he would do a lot of them. He would do like six, seven, eight takes. And I couldn't understand why when I was getting the material, uh, because I felt like he had it in earlier takes, uh, the performance of what I liked about uh, Robin Williams' character. So one day I asked uh, Gus, I said, why are you doing so many takes? I said, oh, because, you know, Robin keeps asking me, can I have another one? Can I have another one? You know? So he would just say, yeah, okay, do another one. Um, but I said, but you have it earlier on. He says, I know, I know. I said, well, you know, it's just like, I like the earlier takes better. Mm -hmm. So, because what, what was happening is, is that in the earlier takes, hit the, the, the choreography, the moving around, the, uh, Robin Williams himself, himself was kind of uncertain and uh, unclear about the, the, the technical aspects of where to move, right? The rhythm of the dialogues in the scene, the, the dynamics of the interaction with the actors. So the more takes he would do, the, the better he would get in hitting those spots. Right. It, it became mental and it became actually more, more mechanical in a way. Mm -hmm. The spontaneity had gone out. It was perfect, it was perfect rhythm, it was all good, you know? Mm -hmm. he, was, he was aware of it, but it wasn't as interesting. What you're saying, like the real... The, the, the real, the, the, the more nervous stuff, right. the, or the, the, the insecure stuff, because he was insecure about his own sense of, uh, of character. He was feeling it out, but that's what's, what was good about it. It was good to have the, the, the raw, un, uncertain version about him. That was more real than the one that was thought out in the news later. So, the whole performance in Good Will Hunting was based on earlier takes, was based on the things that he did not plan on it. <laughs> the whole thing. So the end of the story is when we screened the film for, uh, for Robin Williams, he was like re really nervous. So he sent his wife beforehand to see the film. He came, he came, he came the next day. And when his wife told him it was really good, he saw the film and said, wow, it was really good. You guys did a really good job. You know? And it's like, oh, thanks. He says, I don't know. And he kept looking at me. He said, "You did really well." I said, oh, no, thanks. He says, "Yeah, no, I, I know there were a lot of other takes, you know, but I, know, I guess you guys made the right." I mean, he was surprised by the character that he saw. It was not what he expected. So, 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 I'm just saying that it's about making choices, you know, for for, for the actors. And for me, I mean, I bring something as as an individual, as as, as an editor, but we become very intimate, connected. Uh, to, to the character and to these people and, and to the emotions that they, they give. And I think, you know, you just have to be open to things to happen. And I like, I like mistakes, I like things that are not planned because it's a split second. It's, I mean, it's literally a millionth of a second when you think. It, the, 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 you can fake it, I mean, not fake it, but you just say you can get through it, pre pretend to be here. But the eye, the emotion itself, there's a, it's a minute of a thing between being real and being somewhat, you know, uh, approaching that. Sure. So, so with that too, how difficult then is it in terms of editing improvisation? When, when, there, when there is this, when you have someone like Rob Williams that is just, yeah. he's best when he's firing on impulse and, and is like the, that, the great mess that he is, but yeah. at the same time, well, the thing is, I think it really, you have to, um, I, I noticed that also going back to Goodwill Hunting, that he, because it was a lot of improvisation, that as, as a director, you have to be aware of what happens on the set. You have to be open to things to change. That might change your idea. 
So, for example, in one particular scene, which uh, is between Robin Williams and Matt Damon, and, and you know they're sitting there and they, they can't talk. It's then, there's no communication. They, he needs to break the ice. Well, in the script, there is a there is a line, some some kind of half joke that should be able to break the ice between the actors, right? But it wasn't really funny. And they did a couple of takes and ah, ha, ha, you know, just a, a reaction lot. So that's what I was talking about before that Robin Williams was throwing curveball. So now, you know, they were shooting with two cameras. One is obviously behind Robin Williams uh, and, and uh, facing Matt Damon. Uh, but the way Gus shot it was the camera was the other way, was, was basically on Robin Williams and he did all these lines. So when they switched and did the reverse angle and the camera was behind Robin Williams, Robin Williams, because he was playing with Matt, he was throwing these curveballs. Mm -hmm. So out of the blue, he goes, you know what, something I want to tell you about my wife, you know, she, uh, this is completely made up. He says, you know, she farts when she, when she sleeps. <laughs> and Matt did not expect it, so he really starts laughing. <laughs> and that's real. I mean, it's, it's, you can't fake that laughter. I mean, he just like, you know, breaking, you know, the, the actual, <laughs> the, the actual yeah. we used oh, you that did? scene you did? in, I, I show that all the time in first group because it, Basically speaking to what you're talking about right now, where we talk about where even you can tell everyone's laughing, even the cameraman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And, and, and the thought is, and watching it, it's like, okay, in, in a way, I, I guess, in a way, technically, it's an imperfect shot in the sense of like, okay, this is all moving, but at the same time, it's not because it's. it's no, it's, it's real. Happening. I mean, how can you duplicate that? I mean, it's just like. Right. And the thing is, they kept going. He, it was good for the actor to, to go. I mean, he was listening, seeing Matt's uh, reaction, so they, they kept going with it. Right. And, and Gus was smart and said, you know what, that really worked. Now, let me go back and we do that <laughs> one. You know, and, 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 do, yeah. and, and he did it, so yeah. that's, that's, that's what happened. But it's, uh, it's being uh, receptive to that, to be able to, to listen and to be, be open to it. You know, with all the stress that goes on the set, mm. What I found is like it's it's very very difficult. A lot of things moving around people and you know cameras and you have to be aware and you have to think about you know where you are and what's seen in the script and what your character is doing. There's a lot of stuff that goes into head. But with the some of the actors that see that you know um, shocking. For example, just sometimes when I visit on the set. Somebody with Russell Crowe that you know just be hanging around while they, they set up the cameras and joking around you know and mm -hmm. and talking to some other people and then he says okay we're ready you know to shoot mm -hmm. and then immediately switch I mean and he's he's on I mean it's it's on and then you say how do they do that I absolutely it's, I, mm -hmm. it's a mystery to me I mean I, I find that <laughs> somebody I don't know how how they how they do it but he's able to focus. And then you can see that. You can see that on the, on the dailies. It's just like, he's on. He's on. The in terms of skill of actors, with that in mind, and even staying on Good Will Hunting since we're there, I mean, one of the things that I think the room can learn from is, OK, here, here's Matt Damon and Ben Affleck kind of doing their thing for the yeah. first time, you know, like, like out there and making this thing. And, and from you, the guy watching, what, if anything, do you think Matt and Ben learned from acting on that film or, or since that film? So, since you're cutting all that and kind of working that through, you know, what sort of mistakes were they making that now you're seeing them fix or any of that along the way? I don't know. I just remember that uh, when we first screened the film for Matt and Ben, uh, Ben was not happy. Yeah. It was a good film. I mean, really worked, and uh, but he was not happy because he felt like his uh, his uh, role was diminished, uh, and Mini Driver's role had gotten bigger. It was a shift that we had done uh, in uh, dur during the editing part, not so much because it wasn't. Yes, it's a story about friendship. It's a story, but but it's a, it's a and Matt he was silent because he knew like. It's a really good part of him and his growth and, and change as a, as a character. But we had uh, different uh, difficulties in both in terms of telling the story, not only the relationship with, 
with uh, you know his buddy uh, Ben, mm -hmm. uh, but with uh, uh, you know the, the therapist with Robin Williams, but also the girlfriend, the relationships, mm -hmm. the connections between these people, and what, how different they were, and it had to do with how we structured the scenes around and the movement that uh, we we highlight in, in the characters change. So. Uh, Mini Driver's role became more important the way we place it out sure. because it, so we lead to the end, you know, he makes the choice to go see the girl in California. He's made a choice to, to leave the pathway. Uh, but your question about what they've learned what they, after, after seeing it, specifically just with, with Ben, is that I had reduced uh, certain scenes uh, with Ben in half. Mm -hmm. Not because they were bad. I mean, one particular scene was. Uh, you know, where, uh, where he basically goes for the interview and pretends to be, uh, you know, Will. Right. Yeah. That scene was probably half the length, and it was really, really funny. So after he saw the film, Ben said, you know, why did you cut it? You know, it was, it was good. I said, because I cut it exactly at the point where it's at the highest, you know, in terms. Because after what, because there's another joke, there's another one, right. there's another one. OK, I got it. You know, it's like. So, I mean, you make certain choices because give a little bit more preference to somewhere else. And even all, the, and, and, uh, he was not happy about it. Anyway, even at the, pre, at the premiere, he still said, you know, I mean, with an audience, now he sees the film with an audience, they were laughing, they loved it. You know? And he still said, you see, man, why did you cut it? You should have left it, you know? I said, you know what? I said, you had the audience in the palm of your hands. He said, you're just too greedy. You know what I'm <laughs> so sometimes it's more. And actually thinking, oh, it's my performance, it's my thing, it's that rather than the story that must be told at the end of the day, or what makes something the best story it can be, the best yes. story yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's, it's hard for, you know, for, for actors, uh, because they, they go, they, they, you know, they perform, they give mm -hmm. what, uh, what is asked for, and different takes, but then they don't see it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, the making of a film is a very long process, it goes through many different stages of writing, rewriting, fine-tuning the story, eliminating, condensing, highlighting uh, other things. So you kind of like give it up. Mm -hmm. You don't have any control, you know, anymore uh, in, in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to trust, you know, um, that your work uh, is towards building character and story and that you're in good hands, you know, that people will, will protect that. Ultimately, it's you know to be truthful to character and and, and create a story that uh, people respond to. You know. So with that, then, what makes an actor hard to edit? You know, I I don't know. I mean, it's listen. There's always things we we uh, we use uh, or, or techniques or whatever. I mean, skills that we have to improve a performance, to cut away, to extend certain things. We, I mean, it's totally malleable. It's total manipulation. It's the choices. I mean, it goes down to literally frames, a reaction shot, a look. It, it's a complete cheat. Looks and things that you imagine for something else, we use it somewhere else. That's the, 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 the beauty of it. It's, it's, a, it's invisible uh, in a sense. I mean. Our art, so the, the invisible art, you don't see it. Right. You shouldn't see it. Right, right. You should feel it. Right. And I think for, for the actor, it's the same way. You, sh you want to see, you want to feel the character. You know, you don't telegraph it. Mm -hmm. That's bad. I mean, just basically, you have to, to, be able to be able to express an emotion, that character, that moment, that, that is truthful, mm -hmm. that it connects. I mean, it, you can't, you can't uh, fake it. I mean, I'm just saying. Yes, you can fake it to sure. certain extent, yeah. but I'm just saying when when you hit the audience uh, or or the viewer with the truthful emotions, it's recognizable immediately. And if I see it, if the director sees it, we just need to take that and be able to you know communicate it in such a way that's coherent and cohesive, you know, to a viewer because they they want to experience it. They don't they don't you know think about. How did they get to do that? They just want to have the kind of uh, immediate uh, with reaction. That in mind, are, would, you, would you say then, like, are some great performances made in the edit room, or is it what an actor brings to you then? 
Like what, what we think when we see some people that you've come put together that, that we inherently think are, oh, they're great. Is that something that from you? You're, I, I you're think, no, or? I think the, the actors uh, bring a lot. And I think that uh, in the cutting room, says, well, what can an actor give, give an editor? You know, oh, I have to give him a lot of choices, you know, because that's what that. It's not really true. I mean, the thing is, what I've noticed with some, uh, you know, really uh, amazing actors, um, what they give you from take to take, it's not about, you know, hey, am I really being consistent from take to take? Am I doing all this, that stuff? I think you have to be consistent with the, your internal kind of rhythm of who the actor is and, and, and feel it. But what I, as, as an, what I like as an editor is not so much um, different variation. I can give you this and I can give you that. I'm going to tell you about an example that just came to my mind later on about the uh, choice we made with uh, Joaquin Phoenix, right, in that scene over there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, oh, what I liked what, uh, that the actor brings is, for example, the good actors that give me, or, or in their performance, do slight variations. And what I call them, rather than changing color, it's hues. You want a little bit, like, just imagine color, light blue, medium, dark, you know, they, they can change. They, they're so trained and perfect that they're, they're, they're it's the same emotion, uh -huh. the same idea of, of the emotion that they, they express, but it comes in different hues, and it's amazing. I mean, I, it's uh, and, what, and what do they do? So I'm saying, yeah. uh, if, if, like technically, picture-wise, when, yeah. when you're looking at it, if what makes something a light blue to a dark blue, what, what they're doing within the frame that is it's not, it's, sort of... I don't know, it's not, it's not in the frame. It, it, it has to do with... Uh, Highlighting a certain word, the rhythm of it, the pause, the the, the hesitation, what, whatever it is, uh, it, that the, the emotion or the, the the expression is slightly varied. It's more complex. I mean, there's not only one emotion. Every emotion has different layers, right? right. right? And and you say, well, that's slightly different color. I I, I like that. I like that hesitation. Now, is 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 it? Uh, you know, I I I can use it. It's 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 fine-tuning it's it's yes basic building blocks you build it you get the character but it's that when you get deeper in, in, into layers it's the fine-tuning of character mm. and great actors are able to do that mm. I uh, I don't know how they do it mm -hmm. <laughs> sure sure what's it's, your what's your biggest pet peeve of actors that make it hardest for make your job so hard at times one of my pet peeves <laughs> I just came to it. No, it's that, okay, every, they always they shoot the scene and they do, you know, the master shot and then, then okay, comes your time for the close-up. Okay, here's my time. <laughs> close-up and they change the rhythm. They take the pauses. Like, oh, I'm a close-up. They're not going to be able to, right. to cut. Right, right, right. That's like, cut. <laughs> you can cut any pause, you can do anything you, you want. It's just that when you, it's, it's when they milk it, yeah. you know, yeah. because it's a close-up. It's like, I'll use a close-up if it's necessary. It's not, it's not a given. <laughs> but then, can we talk about listening for a moment, yeah. just in terms of, uh, you know, so much, what you hear forever at. Great acting is listening and reacting. Yes. And I feel like the, the edit room gets to then decide where that then takes place, yeah. right? Um, why make the decision, okay, at this point, why I need to be on this guy getting the information rather yeah. than receiving or uh, saying it. Um, as an editor, what does listening and reacting mean to you? Well, I like reactions. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a Basically, a basic rule: if if it's uh, if you need to uh, communicate something that um, is more a story exposition story point that is not really a character uh, point, uh, uh, it's good to be on the actor when he says that. Simply because sometimes people, when when they watch being off screen, I mean being on the reaction shot, don't really hear it if it's an important point. Uh, when, uh, when, uh, when it's more about character, I, I like reactions because what I like is to, 
it, it's it basically boring rhythm, and, and which you see in a lot of television because it's simply shot. I'm just not putting down television because it's great television, but I'm just saying you can see boring uh, editing is as simple as boring rhythm. Baba, every single line, da, da, ba, 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 it's, it's boring. The thing is, a good director knows how to move the camera, uh, different sizes of shots, emphasis on certain things. But uh, what I'm interested in is subtext. I'm interested, for example, if you have a dialogue scene, is how do you express the thing that is not said, right? It's like, what is the... The, the feeling, the, the, let's say, the air between the two actors. I, I want to experience that. Mm. That, to me, is more interesting. So a lot of times, a reaction or uh, an emphasis or something or something that the, the viewer is given an insight in, into the internal uh, state of the, uh, the actor or, or, or character is what I'm interested in. And that, we get to investigate. Yes, when, 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 you, when you see it, when, when you feel it, mm. It's not uh, explicit. It's not. Um, um, it's when you experience the, the internal uh, um, life of the character. That's what that's what I like. And a lot of times, it's about how people react or how their body language or whatever it is. It's and, and this is what the actors bring. It's 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 things that. What I like is things that they're not aware of. It's what the person brings. It's not something uh, conscious. And it's, you, you look for those things that, um, clues that build character. Because that's what the viewer wants. Pu the viewer wants, to, uh, the, the audience wants to have a privileged, you know, insight into the character. And it the, informs. It informs that. But the only way you really have a successful movie or, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a successful performance has to do with how the viewer is invested in that character. Mm -hmm. And th that happens very early. That happens with every film. Uh, and as, as, as storytellers, we are aware of that. There, there, there is a process of identification that happens with every film. Mm -hmm. and, and the clearer you are, and with that process as a viewer, it's like riding a wave. Let's say you know if you if you sense if you surf and you ride away, you you uh, you get a sense of the uh, the, the, the the character's uh, internal emotional journey, mm -hmm. and if you hit it right, just like you're playing an instrument, if you hit the notes right or when you sing, you can let the viewer go on that same journey to be correct to to, to feel it, and so that's what, um, what I always look for. Sure, and so with that then being said. In, in our rooms a lot, I, I talk a lot about behavior. I talk about behavior informing character. I talk about you know, what, the, what the actor does, what the character does. Um, we, we spend a lot of time talking about uh, also picture-based storytelling, that, that this happens and this happens and this happens based on you know, what, what someone's doing within the frame. Yeah. Um, would you be able to just speak a little bit more about from your <coughs> own in terms of what, what a character does, what, what you are cutting on, what you are, what you need to have happen in order to inform character or, or story or that sort yeah. of thing in terms of the visuals. Yes, the most important thing, uh, and this is how uh, basically your brain or your eyes work, but you have to look at it as a, as a graphic element. And then you have a lot of tools as a filmmaker. You have you know the visuals and sound. But the most important thing is to tell a story visually for, for, for filmmakers. So the way the frame is composed, the information contained in the frame is important, the way it moves, the, 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 uh, the subject moving within the frame, it's all choreographed and it's things you're not aware of. But I can tell you the most important thing in the frames, in the frame is, are the eyes, okay? It's the focal point of anything. When you look at the frame and, you, and we look at a close up or medium shot, it's the, the eyes that are the cent, central part of the frame. And what I explain by that is, is that the eyes reveal all, all the truth, as, you know, as we know, the soul and so forth. But on a, on a visual level, the position of the eye, the way it's composed, the way the director gives it, the viewer, and this is uh, scientifically proven, is that your eye, when you analyze a frame, starts with a focal point on the eyes. Mm -hmm. 
That's the, the one. It tells you which angle it looks like, G geography, you get a sense, but basically your eye, what happens is, is that you, your eye starts with the eyes and focuses, it goes around like this. You know, get, getting the whole frame in, uh, frame in. You know, what is there, what position, size and stuff. Your, your, your eye will, will do that. So the eyes are, are very important uh, within the frame. And, you know, when you shoot the scene, and people have a lot of difficulty with, because they talk about, uh, you know, the, the uh, direction. Right? Like you can't cross the line. I don't know if you've heard me explain these things about how you, you frame, how people talk to each other. You know, you can't have both talking that way. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. So basic, you know, cinematic rules. But people have difficulty uh, in, in, com in the simple scene, just like around the table, how do you shoot, you know? <coughs> which over the shoulder? I mean, wh who's looking to whom? Which way is that? People get lost Jer Jer when you have more than two people. If you have eight people and you have to go, that, 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 you know, it just it becomes really painfully complex. Anyway. But it's important to, uh, when, when, when the director you know, positions the camera and has the actor and says, you're going to move from here to there, it's very important that the actor has a sense of geography as well. You know, or where the camera is positioned, to have a sense of what the shot size is, is like. Which way am I looking? How far am I looking? Sometimes it's like, it's like, am I looking there or there? You know, it's like tiny. And that's very, very noticeable on uh, the, the, the eye line, you know, in terms of geography. So a good director will match islands, and you can see that. I mean, the angle, reverse and, and, and so forth, uh, and, and the reaction shots that the angles of the islands uh, match. Uh, I, I think that the, 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 the very experienced actors have a sense, have a larger sense, not only of their character and story, but also on the set of how to move around, mm -hmm. where the camera is. They, get, they know. They, 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 they know the camera is going to move there, it's going to pick me up here, and then I'm going to be in this size. They, 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 they have a mental uh, image of what that size looks like, you know? And some of them are so uh, you know, well experienced that they, it's, it's second nature to them. Uh, they also know where the light is. You know, where's the sweet spot, you know? I, I mean, I'm not an actor, so I don't know. What it feel like? It would be probably very self-conscious having somebody, you know, the camera looking at me. So you have to like completely forget about it. But I think, you know, what like two people on top of one front of cameras now. Up <laughs> but I, I'm just saying, for example, I, I when I'm in the cutting room, I get uh, I, I I lose a sense of time. I don't. I mean, I spend a lot of hours, but I'm in the movie. Mm -hmm. I'm in the scene. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm physically pretend I'm in there. So I guess that's it's the same thing that happens for actors on the set. Yeah. Forget everybody else, and, and you're just you're job, second you're just, But yeah, the second nature is like, yeah, you know what? I would, they, they'll put mark on the on the floor where you have to hit it. One of the other pet peeves is like, don't look down on the mark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who cares if you hit it or not? It'll be out of focus, but don't worry about it. They'll do it again. You know, and sometimes it's like. The, the, other, the other thing is it's like matching. What we say, like, even, this is not just for, for actors, you know, like if a cigarette or a drink, you know, and it's like, you know, oh, I'm setting the table. Have to, yeah, it, it's like continuity thing. The same problem is with editors, you know, when they start off, they think that, you know, you have to match. Yeah. The, the thing is, we always say matching is for wimps, you know, like, you know, <laughs> who cares about matching? If the rhythm is right, doesn't matter. People, I mean, yes, you can get away with it. It's like, if the rhythm is off, you'll notice it. You know, I mean, uh, it's um, you have to be right with the rhythm. Yeah, we we talked about when we watched before this uh, the gladiator fight scene. We talked about this a little bit, and, and we discussed a lot. Just kind of the there's these moments of like the swords and like the chain, 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 and then and then tiger coming up, and it's like brrr, like like all this like you like do these like cuts in a way so quick and like to create that sort of yeah uh, like what it does to us in terms of like the surprise or the suspense of it. It was it was just uh, just because it had like I told you before it, it took over a long period of time a lot of second unit went back and. Uh, we basically, because the tigers were getting bored, you know, after half an hour, that you know we had to recreate it. So that's why it's it's a solution, the small cut. Yeah, it'd be great to just not cut and have all the just hang back here and yeah, watch yeah, all yeah, the yeah, sure, hang. Yeah. No, but it didn't happen. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the one uh, one funny story is like how things come about on uh, on JFK. 
I don't know if you guys have seen JFK, but there is a, a character played by Donald Sutherland, X, and he basically, uh, uh, Garrison, uh, played by Kevin Costner, meets his ca uh, character in, uh, in uh, New York. Uh, he's, he's like, you know, black ops, and so he gives him all the secrets. And then he goes back, does some more uh, investigating, and he meets him a second time. Uh, anyway, to make a uh, story short, is basically what happened is, is that there were just too many scenes. They were very long. So at one point, we decided to combine those two scenes. And we cheated the dialogue. But the, uh, uh, the way we, we, ha we had to cheat to get around, because they were talking, I used extremely long shots. So you couldn't see it. So they're really, really small. And I just remember that a friend of mine says, I love that scene that you, you know, the way it was cut, you know, just seeing the, the long shot and two actors right there on the little bench. It just showed the oppressiveness of, you know, Washington <laughs> on these two. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can we kind of oh, yeah. end this oh, yeah. whole thing? Yeah, I want to show you this, this one. This is a funny story. I want to show you this scene with Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, when Joaquin... Uh, came on the set to, uh, to uh, play Commodus on, in Gladiator, he was very nervous. First day on the set, they put him on, on, in a uniform, uh, and he was just totally out of there. I mean, and I just remember he was very nervous, apprehensive, and his first scene is with Russell Crowe, right? The general is going to meet him. So he was totally out of his uh, comfort zone. When Ridley uh, said, yeah, God, you know, he's, he, I, I, I think he's a great actor, one of, one of the best, absolutely. Uh, but he was so nervous that he told Ridley, like in a second, like, please fire me, I can't do this, I can't possibly do it. <laughs> so throughout, he was my favorite character in, in Gladiator, but throughout his uh, evolution, he finally grew into his, the, the armor sure. that he, he was wearing, this, the, the costume, literally, yeah. physically. And... Uh, He's such a sensitive actor that there were instances, uh, and he was also insecure, but he, built, he worked into it. He's such a sensitive actor that at one point in the scene where uh, Richard Harris or uh, Marcus Aurelius tells him that you're not going to be emperor, Ma uh, 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 Maximus will, will be. He literally, I mean, as an actor, he on screen, I'm not going to show you that scene, but if you go back in that particular scene, he literally fades for a moment on screen. I mean, you can see his eyes going, like when, when he says that. I mean, it was so physically uh, 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 shocking to him. Anyway, the scene I'm going to show you is called Am I Not Merciful? And uh, we were, because we were shooting in chronological order, there were a lot of changes that were happening uh, throughout. Uh, we rewrite the script, and we were, we were gear, uh, steering the, the film in a certain direction. So a lot of times we had to go back and reshoot certain scenes. So one day I was on the set, and they had shot this scene where uh, Commodus, uh, Joaquin, confronts his sister, he confronts her about the betrayal that just happened. So I was on the set, and uh, I was, we, had, we had to talk to Ridley, and I had to talk to uh, uh, the actress uh, about another scene and why we changed. Radio was like, "Can you come down here and explain why we're doing this?" You know. Anyway, Joaquin sees me and says, "Hey, uh, I wanted to ask you about that scene. You know, uh, how is it?" And because I, I like to tease, I, you know, it was like, "Is it over the top?" And I said, "I said a little bit." No, no, I'm just kidding. You know, he was like, "Oh, no, no, I hope it was." He said, "No, he said, I, <laughs> yeah, no, he, exactly." Just, no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Just, I wanted, when I, no, he said, "No, listen, I really, seriously, I wanted to ask you. you know, I did you know a couple of takes. You know, uh, there's a really uh, strong one. You know, where where he sh where he shouts the the, the line and I'm not merciful and, and the basic and the quiet one. He says, "Just, I just want to know which one did you use." Uh, oh, by the way, first I asked, did you cut the scene? I said, yeah, I did it. How is it? And I said, oh, it's, it's great. And so I said, which take did you use? And I said, well, I used both. He said, what? Yeah, I used both takes. Anyway, I'll show it to you. <laughs> that's awesome. So, so that's, that's one example, right, where, where it's not written. It's, it's, it wasn't uh, directed that way. It was just two takes. You know, made up, but built a performance based, uh, based on those two takes. It, it's, it's, it's like text subtext. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, this, yeah. It's like seeing the inner part of him right after yeah. this initial yeah. thing. Yeah. Like that, what's brewing underneath the whole scene. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. I mean, you, you could have gotten it just like this, the software, man not merciful, you know, and just like no response and ended that way. But just that, that was so great. And, you know, the, the screen. Or you could have just gone with the screen, but then it wouldn't be... 
Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> I got it. That good. That's why it was obvious. Uh, I mean, at least to me. <laughs> the last question I have uh, before you have to go to class again. Um, what's one thing that you wish every actor knew about your job? It's just that we, uh, I mean, we fall in love with the characters. You know, we are there to uh, protect. You know, uh, the story and character. Um, it's just that it's uh, what, what happens. I mean, for me, uh, you know, I uh, I love my job. I think it's it's a magical thing. I'm what they should know is that I am uh, really privileged to to be part of little moments of creation that happen in the room, and not many people get to see that. I mean, the actual act of, of creation because. Before that, everything you do, all the material, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's fake, it's artificial. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yes, I mean, it's, it's truthful in the way it's recorded. But the actual, uh, because uh, this, the synthesis or, or the actual creation of the emotion is only done at that moment. When you, when you, when you select something, you put it in contrast with something else and you create something new. And you build it like that. It is, it is that synthesis of... Uh, and communicating that uh, makes it real. Once it's, you know, uh, felt, it becomes real. Before that, I mean, it's like for me, it's like they, they all go out and, uh, you know, create great ingredients. You know, <laughs> they they till the soil, they grow the crops, they create ingredients, and they give me, give it to me to make a great meal. Yeah. Well, is it possible to ask questions? Or is that Go ahead, quickly. Yeah, I thought that really was quick. part of it. Yeah. No, we I thought absolutely. There well, the, I love, I love it. Are there questions that we have? Quick ones before we head out? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just interested if there's a, a character that's stuck with you throughout your entire career that you haven't been able to let go of, like that just had a, a big impact on you or just unfinished business maybe, like you just, you just were with it. Well, I mean, Joaquin was one of the uh, great characters uh, I was with me and I, uh, loved uh, was done. I mean, the, the audience when they saw the film the first time, they thought it was an arch villain, and I thought he was a very, very complex character. Um, really uh, lucky to have worked with some, you know, uh, with Jack Lemon or with uh, Walter Matthau, you know, on JFK. I mean, really amazing actors. I was uh, Tommy Lee Curtis, uh, Joe Pesci, you know, just like amazing, amazing actors, and even uh, Kevin Bacon, really. Stunning, mm -hmm. extremely uh, well, uh, has a great craft. And, uh, no, I. Thing is, we get so intimate with the characters and with the person themselves that uh, a lot of times, you know, I mean, it happened to me before that, you know, I, uh, I work on the scene and then I, I see uh, the actual actor on, on the set and I just like, hey, how are you? And they go, like, who are you? Like, <laughs> Like you know, like you know them really in this. Oh, sorry, like, we haven't actually met. But anyway. I want you hate yourself between takes enough time. To <laughs> I know, you know, I know you're intimate. Uh, yes. Um, we've talked about before, like blinking and. Oh the way yeah, that, the blinking the thing. That, that eyes communicate thought and how blinking. Yeah. Like. Was, them. I'm curious if you talk about that. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, Walter Murch, uh, a great editor, wrote a book called The Blink of an Eye, but he was describing how we uh, uh, learn about and experience, uh, you know, how editing reflects how we experience life in general. But specifically about blinking is, is, that, is that some actors, you know, w w you blink a lot. It's, it's, what happens is the blink completes a thought, but also uh, uh, distracts from the, the actors himself, you know, uh, think of something else, and, and it becomes noticeable. Or obviously, you have to blink to get your eyes, uh, you know, moist. But the thing is, the uh, what I notice also with uh, inexperienced uh, editors is that they don't. I, I th you, you learn it through 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 the years where where to make the cut and the, and the sweet spot of, of the cut. But unexperienced editors will usually make it right after the blink. It's too late. It's like you know four six frames too late. I mean, that's like a fourth 
uh, of, of a second, you know, a quarter of a second. The reason that happens and why the cut is late is because it happens after the sweet spot, after the thought is completed. It's like, you know, if I have every beginning and every end, it's like boring. You know, it's like you, you, you're late. You want to cut because if you cut before, if you cut right before the blink, it propels you into the next one. Right. But rather than have, it's like, it's like the emotion, it's just like you cut here, you don't cut on right. this side because here, it's, when it's finished, it's too right. late. It's in, on the sweet spot. The same thing is like, you know, what you talk about how you cut improvisation and on Goodwill Hunting and, you know, people tell you, oh, you, you know, wait till somebody finishes talking until you do because they can't edit when you have overlapping dialogue. It's true, you can't cut it. You cannot, uh, I mean, tech, yes, you can do it. It's just more uh, difficult to do, but uh, on Goodwill Hunting, there was a lot of overlapping dialogue, and the, 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 the dialogue recorders was really concerned about me cutting. I said, I, "Don't worry about it. I know how to get around it." You know, and the same thing with, with dialogue. I wouldn't worry so much about, I mean, unless the director tells you or the script supervisor says, "Hey, you know, don't step on the other actor's line." It's, there's also sweet spots in, uh, in where to cut with words. There are words that end on really a, a hard consonant, which makes it a really hard cut, mm -hmm. defining or, or where you cut in between syllables rhythmically again. Or there are words that end, for example, with very soft uh, uh, endings, for example, an ing, a ling, you know, a longer uh, resonance, which also makes a nice sweet spot. So with uh, things you don't have to worry about. <laughs> It's, uh, but I'm saying with, with the blinking of the eyes, like, how people like, you know, act as a fo I think it has to do with focusing, you know, and, and being in it. Uh, it's not that you don't blink, but as soon as, as you blink, the thought is done. Keep us guessing, keep the feeling of... And, uh, yeah, and, and um, yeah, don't, absolutely the worst thing is, is when you cut, blink, cut. It's like, it's rhythmically, it's just bad. Uh -huh. that, that, it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, or in what situation do you handle maybe an actor who you find in their eyes are nervous or something in terms of it's an aliveness sometimes that maybe sort of happens on set yeah. in the scene that you kind of can't escape. So, like as an editor, but also sometimes when you are on set, and or, I don't know if you've ever seen that and recognize it, oh, she might, he or she might be nervous or something else is going on. Yeah. That sort of might change the story, so how do you deal with that? Well, it depends. I mean, the thing is, if it's, if it's uh, bad nervousness, you know, it's like self-consciousness, you, you avoid it. But for example, uh, because it's just distracting, but for example, in Joaquin's case, he was very nervous. I mean, as, as a person, just to be there. And the scene with Richard Harris, he was so nervous, like, I'm acting with Richard Harris. And, and his yes. But I used that nervousness. That was good. That was good that he was uh, that you know, uncertain about himself. The same thing with, uh, uh, with Robin Williams. It, w w what was real? And uh, as I said, it's not a given what the character is. It's, it's what actually happens in the game. And if it's, uh, you know, if it's useful for the character or if you, if, if you, listen, you have to have a point of view. In fact, as, as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, you have to commit to something, right? Uh, and the same thing is, is, is for me. I, if I see something, if, I, if it, I have a certain reaction, have an idea where it would go, I will use it. If, if, it's, if it's not uh, usable, if it's, uh, then I'll avoid it. Can you change someone's performance if they are insecure? Can you notice that? Can you make it so they seem like they're not? Like, can you change the way that they guess again? <laughs> You can do anything. That's the thing. So you say it's it's like we are we are we are the, uh, the I told you the Oz behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. you, if you see it. the one thing I want to say is though that pe people ask before like for example directors don't want to show dailies to actors. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's I, I, sometimes now with the, with the tent and, and the screens you know actors come in and say hey can I see the take and you know if you're a star they, they they'll see it they go through through it but it's I to me. It's, it's, it's not uh, useful. I mean, I don't know. I just th think that 
I've noticed that when actors see it, they become very self-conscious. They start analyzing it, and that's it's bad. It's you, you, you know, you you shouldn't be. Don't see it outside. Have somebody else worry about that. I, I think that's why a lot of uh, directors refuse to show. Not because I do it, but it's because it's the mirror, you know, uh, that uh, is not useful. I, I think. Yeah, I think any actor that gets in their head probably isn't great. Yeah, because the, I, I can tell you from experience, you don't look at story and character. At that moment, you say, God, my hair looks bad, no. my nose is... A, no, I look fat, no, right. forget that chain. <laughs> and, and what we do is a lot of times, I mean, it's just like, yeah, we can do cosmetic things. Right, right. Lower the chain, put some more hair in the back. <laughs> we can do anything. Skin. All right. So speaking of that... You, you all need to go and watch yourselves on you. television, uh, act uh, in other classes now. So, um, uh, uh, obviously, round of applause and. Thanks for that. You are released.